Greetings everyone and welcome to a new mini-series for the channel where we're going to be checking out Automation Empire. A recent uh, addition to the kind of build your own factory, manage logistics kind of genre of games. Uh, it is developed by Dog Hoggler, if I get that name correct, which, uh, yeah, that's, that's certainly an interesting name. And it was released only three days ago as of the uh, going live of this video on the 20th of November. Now, let's start start this out in a bit of an uncharacteristic way and I'm going to start by telling you what this game is not. This game is not Factorio. This game is not satisfactory. It certainly shares um, a genre with those games and there are some elements within the game that, that have more than a passing similarity and, and have the same kind of feel. But it is a very, very different game. It certainly doesn't have the kind of depth in the research tree that Factorio does. It has a bit more of a 3D feel over Factorio, but it kind of has a similar kind of grid-based building pattern versus Satisfactory's very 3D, very freeform, you know, draw your conveyor belts as you please kind of uh, building style. There are lots of things that you can compare between the games, but this is categorically neither of those games. And uh, I just want to get that particular expectation out of the way before we move forward. Now, having told you what this game isn't, let me show you what this game is. So we start off by uh, picking any uh, of uh, up to 14 maps, so it looks like the last four are locked, possibly behind completing some of these maps. Uh, we've got Split Valley, Rocky Hills. It looks like we jump around different planets, which is actually kind of nice. In fact, in the game, I think you can eventually start uh, shipping um, materials out to uh, via rocket to the galactic market. It is very much based on production and then export of those things. You, you haven't really got a, a self-contained um, goal like with Factorio where you're kind of trying to deal with biters, also build up the research and uh, construct your factory and eventually launch a satellite. This one is more of a business emphasis, kind of more of a tycoon -y take on the factory building things, but we're going to start at the beginning. I do have a, a, a little call in there already that I've been playing around with, uh, but we're going to start off with a new one. We're going to go with, um, let's go with, you know what? Dapper Dunes, because it's a bit of a sandy one. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to turn off starter mode. Starter mode just starts you with a couple of buildings, but uh, having uh, given the game a, a little bit of time already, I think I will have more fun showing you from the very, very beginning before we place down uh, even the first building. Right, split valley, work around a dried up riverbed, jumping through the, la uh, sorry, jutting through the landscape, splitting it in half. Go, move three, uh, 30,000 kilograms within three months. Uh, that, is, that isn't a time limit, it's just within any particular three month period. And it's also a secondary goal if you particularly want to go that extra mile to move 45,000. Now, what I would recommend, right at the beginning, if you've got no buildings, don't worry too much about this, but pause is your friend. There is no means to speed up the game and uh, forewarned is forearmed. The game will will in, involve uh, spending quite a lot of time sometimes waiting for things to develop. But uh, this should be good as is. We've got coal down here. We've got iron over there. We have got gold on the map. Uh, these little uh, golden nodes right there. And I do believe if we can have a look around there, there is also some oil somewhere. I think it may actually be over here. Now, as far as I'm aware, those are the only resources. You can manufacture um, certain resources beyond this. You can grow uh, grasses once you go through the research tree. There is research. Uh, this is the entirety of it, and I don't believe this changes between maps. So this is the, the depth and breadth of the research tree. You can also research upgrades to things you've already unlocked, just improving them in some small way. We have got a couple of things that we will uh, probably talk over once we get the game going. But let's start at the beginning, shall we? We need a way to sell stuff. And we're going to start from the uh, the top down. So how are we going to get our goods out to make us money? Well, we're going to start with road. It's the only option. You can eventually have trains. You can also have rockets, as I mentioned. Now, a uh, couple of the buildings in the game use an interesting mechanic whereby you have to build them near existing elements. The first one, when there isn't something, so there was no uh, entry um, point on the map, uh, I couldn't build 
Uh, I could build one anyway. I have to build it into a cliff face. Uh, however, now that there is one, if I wanted to try and build another one, I would have to make sure that it was close to this one. So uh, it's a bit of an interesting design choice. I'm not really sure what the uh, what the idea behind that is, but it does force you to kind of consider where you're starting. Um, now, actually, to that end, and here's a, a little tip right off the beginning. By starting over here, I'm only ever going to be able to build uh, entrances for the roads on this side. But if I build it over here, because this particular rock face has uh, another side to it that I can easily access, I might be able to build roads in that direction at some point as well. But uh, we'll see if that ever is something we want to do. So there we go, there's my uh, entrance. Here is my exit. We'll pop that one right there. Perfect. We're also going to want to get a road stop. Now, uh, if you may be wondering, why is it suddenly so quiet? There is no music in the game. There is music on the menu, but there is not music in the game. Uh, we'll pop this down there. It'll cost 10,000. That's fine. We got a uh, full refund on the roads. That is a theme that will continue throughout the game. When you demolish something you built, you'll get all of the money back for having uh, built it. There may be some caveats to that. For example, if you demolish a, um, a building that has child buildings connected to it or, or child entities, for example, a drone bay that you have drones connected to, it will destroy the drones. I don't know if you get a refund on those drones. But we have a road uh, depot. This will eventually start um, bringing in trucks. Now, I'm going to want drones, when we've actually got something to deliver to them, to deliver to that at a high priority. We're going to start small. Uh, I'm more or less going to just recreate what the game would give you at the start, but I, I felt that it might be fun to actually build this up intentionally. Now, we've got a mining drill there. We want a way of... Because this is just going to output just streams of whatever it's mining. Big, giant, great heaps. You could store them in a in a um, in a container if you particularly wanted to. But ultimately, we want to ship them out on trucks, and the trucks are going to expect things in crates. So to that end, we've got to use a crate maker. Constructs and outputs crates onto a conveyor or unload station. Has optional input ports that allow crates to be filled during creation. Can be built inside or outside. Limited to production of thirty crates, which must be sold or destroyed before more crates can be made. Now uh, this is going to cost one thousand six hundred per month worth of power and the mining drill will cost 800 per month worth of power uh, we are going to need this and we're going to want to hook it up to the mining drill now they don't connect directly you have to have a step between them and for that we are going to want the transfer tube. Now, these are not pipes. It's a really, really important distinction to make because when I first checked out the, ga the game, I was like, well, why can't I have pipes that bend? This doesn't make any sense. These are not pipes. These are these basically have an, uh, have an auger inside. It's, it's how you would convey a solid object rather than through a pipe. There's no like water pressure or gas pressure forcing things down the pipe. Instead, you've just got items inside and there's like a, there's like a corkscrew, if you like, inside that is constantly constantly turning and driving the items along. So these are these are buildings more than just pipes, if you want to think of them like that. And you've got uh, two versions, one that is three tiles long, one that is one tile long. Uh, and if you just remember that these are effectively augers, it is so, it makes so much more sense. Now, one problem is that we're gonna be far away, but we will fix that in a little bit. We want unload stations. Drones can be set to pick up crates here, also connect with the claw train, drop off pickup stops, we'll eventually get to claw trains. Now these are a little bit pricey to make, so I'm just gonna pop two of them down like so. And I'm also gonna tell them that I would like drones to interact with them. Now you can tell these to destroy crates. That means if any crate gets to the end of this conveyor belt, Currently, it won't destroy them. It'll let them just sit there. If it's an empty crate, however, this conveyor belt will just kind of fall away into a trapdoor and the crate will disappear and be destroyed. If you turn this on, then whether the crate is empty or full, if it manages to get to the end of this queue and it hasn't gone anywhere yet, it hasn't been dealt with, it's going to be destroyed so that you don't end up with a backlog. Effectively, um, materials are infinite in this game. So this will keep but mining until the stars grow cold, and it'll be fine. Uh, well, I mean, it won't be fine for us. The star will have gone cold, but you know what I mean. Right, we also want some power. Um, I'm going to pop the power. Well, you know what? We can we can stick the power over here. It's not too much of a problem. There we go. Now, this costs us a whopping 25,000, but it generates electric power, which certain structures require. Now, if you have a look there, capacity is 40. Now, there is no direct explanation of capacity. 
It says it needs 800 per month, and this needs 1,600 per month. So one will be using, um, uh, this will be using twice as much as my drill. But what is that in terms of the capacity? I don't know. But we will hopefully find out when I place this. If we have a look at that, how much capacity is it used? It's used four. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, uh, there are little things like that in this game where it's uh, when you're trying to build a unit, it's giving you some sort of readout in a specific type of unit. And then you, when you build the producer of that thing, it gives you the, the amount it's producing in a different unit. And it's like, ha, well, this is a bad, bad uh, tragedy just waiting to happen. Hmm, NASA could ha tell you a little bit about mixing your units of measure. All right. OK, so with that, we finally want a drone bay. Uh, we can place this more or less anyway, and we can pop it down there for now. This will take uh, 400 uh, power per month. Let's have a look at how that's affected this. Uh, it's now at 4 or 40. That, uh, I, I don't even. But uh, it is powered, and now with that, we can have four drones. These cost 4,000 each. We'll just go with uh, two for now. All right, there we go. We can unpause, and we can let things start moving. Now, with that done, this will actually start producing a little bit of uh, a bit of uh, resources. The mining drill is producing one coal ore every 10 seconds. The crate maker can produce one crate every three seconds. Now, if we've hooked it up to a source of something to fill the crates with, it won't make empty cr crates, well, right now. It doesn't have a particular reason to just be making empty crates when it could just be filling them with materials instead. But uh, you can set this to just output empty crates, and th there are uses for that that we'll, we'll discuss later. Here we are, our first truck has arrived, and our second truck is on the way already, really? That's rather earlier than I would have expected. But okay, I'm I'm on board with this. We should see another truck coming through shortly. No, I think there was a perhaps a little little mix up there when I initially built the uh, the truck stop. Perhaps it was uh, counting from that point. But as you can see, this will t this is our progress until the next truck arrives. But because of the distance to our um, crate maker, our drones are spending quite a lot of time in motion. They do look cute though. I, I like them a lot. They make little little noises. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to hear those, but uh, they are they are singing to each other and to us possibly. But uh, this is a bit of an inefficiency there that we are going to want to address. But there we go. The uh, truck is heading on its way. We should see a new truck appear in the near future. Now that drone, because the truck was still there and still had room for a crate, the drone got an order to go and pick up a crate. But this drone won't. Because it didn't get an order to pit that there was a, a truck waiting delivery um, before the last truck left, and now there is no particular reason for the drone to go and pick up a crate. So uh, sometimes having a couple of drones can help with a little bit of inefficiency in uh, terms of distance, because uh, whilst that truck is there, if you've got four drones, and perhaps three of them will end up holding crates ready to deposit straight away. And to that end, I'm going to help things along by adding in another two drones. We may as well. Really? Two? Straight away again? Oh, that is most vexing. I'm not sure why that's going on. That's uh, a bit of errant behavior, I'll be honest. But this little uh, problem there is going to be the first inefficiency that we fix. And to that end, we're going to set up something that I'm sure quite a lot of people are going to be very happy with. I should always build whilst uh, pause, by the way, because the moment these things get hooked up to power, they start uh, costing me. We're paying uh, money per uh, for the power that we use. Right now, we've got a monthly tax cost of 306 and a monthly power cost of 3,600. We have made, so far this month, 7,090. That's not too too bad. Uh, the, uh, it, the power cost is taken out of these tiny little increments throughout the month. Uh, the tax I will discuss in a moment, but for, for now we're going to just hook this up to power whilst it's paused so there's no particular issue. Some buildings will relay power through them, some buildings will not. Will not. Notably, there is a factory in the game, and that does not, and that caught, caught me off guard pretty heavily the first time I played. Right, let's grab these. Now, this is a transfer tube, uh, much like these are, but this one uh, will transfer resources from a structure's ground port to a step conveyor or a minecart, and that is exactly what we want. So I'm going to place this one down there. It costs me 1,000. doesn't cost any power, though, which is quite nice. We'll also place one down right there. So how are we going to get all of this stuff around? Well, we mentioned minecarts. So there's a mine track. Serves as a track for a single train of minecarts. Carts which reach the end of the track reverse their direction. Each cart can load four crates worth of resources. We absolutely want that to happen. Now, 
each one of these locations can only load onto a straight piece of track. So I always start off by putting that down to know where I've got to bring the track around to. There we are. Nice little ring like that will do as nicely. There we go. Now, currently, that's not really going to do much for us. It's just going to fill a cart, and the cart is going to go around in circles. Also, this will still be the only place where any materials are being shifted. Well, we're going to be changing that one. We've got 4,000 right now. We're going to need to wait for a tiny bit more more uh, money for that. To that end, uh, I'm actually going to delete you right now. Again, you're, there's a lot of forgiveness in this game if you uh, get a bit ahead of yourself and place something down that you can't quite afford because you get everything back. Now, that is probably a bad habit to get into, and I do apologize for that, but uh, for now, it uh, worked out okay. We want a container. Uh, so this container, you can tell it what it's allowed to accept. I'm fine with it accepting anything, and I want to add a cart to this track. Now, this is go only going to be picking up from this mining tower right now because this one is outputting straight into the uh, crate maker. I'm actually going to cut off its supply for now, though. Hopefully, we will still have enough uh, materials to send off one more. There we go. Perfect. Yep, yeah, it's got enough to send off one more. And you're actually going to be able to see how this works. Now that it's not connected up to any uh, resources, it's just going to produce empty crates, and they're, they're just going to be destroyed. Right, we don't want you around anymore. Right, let's uh, pause things there. We're going to need to take some power over a little bit. Now, again, the whole point of this was to make it a little bit more efficient for moving uh, materials onto the truck stops. So for that, we're going to want to move the, uh, the conveyor belt all the way over here if we can. And the same thing, we only really need two, uh, though we could operate with four now, since we've got four drones. Still need that to be a high priority over there. Right, well, the way we're going to move this is we're currently just storing the uh, ore loose in this, uh, in this um, container. We want to store that instead over here. And I would like it very much if it was lined up just like so. There we go. It's almost like I planned it. I didn't. I just, uh, well, ultimately, this was the plan, but uh, the line, the fact that it lined up was luck, not judgment. I can't take credit for when it's not due. Right, there we go. And we want to pull back in there. Now, I've got two minecarts right now, and this uh, may seem like a bit of uh, a bit of an excess, but we're not really paying any money on the minecarts. There's not an upkeep. There's just an initial expense. So what we're going to see is this minecart is going to grab the uh, minerals from over here, going to drop it off into this area and immediately start creating more crates. And that is going to make everything just a little bit faster for us. Uh, at this point, the moment we have the opportunity to build the new mining um, station, then everything should be moving along quite nicely. Now, the way that these load, the minecart can hold up to four, but it'll only take in discrete increments of two. So the fact that this has one unit there, it's not going to offload into that minecart until there is two, or if there is four, in which case they will completely fill the minecart's capacity. Um, but the minecart will just ignore it until there is at least two there. That is a bit of a uh, bit of an annoyance, honestly, because we're, we're losing trucks there, but oh well. And then it takes twice as long for the next truck to arrive. A little bit of a, of a problem, but oh well. Uh, right, we can improve that, though, if we get that set up like so. Costs us a little bit. These, again, we're not paying upkeep on these. They don't seem to draw any power directly, but there's the initial uh, cost of building it. But this will mean that we're going to be able to shunt a, a, a half, uh, sorry, two-thirds of a truck straight away. If this is full and none of our drones are carrying anything, we'll be able to load two-thirds of a truck without any issues at all. If I extend that another two, then an entire truck's worth of materials will be there. Ah, almost. Very, very nearly. But this will mean that my drones can uh, start stockpiling, uh, or rather they can very quickly load the truck, and maybe we can catch that second truck along. That isn't really normal behavior, and it'll probably be fixed when I load the game next. There we go. So there we are. This can now stockpile six crates worth of ore there. We're currently bringing out coal ore. Uh, we need to get another 15 before we can build the next uh, mining uh, mining Derek, I guess. Um, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get this loaded. I really do hope we can. But 
I suspect it might not be possible. Oh, oh, this might be good enough. Are you going to be gone in time? Yes. Oh, fantastic. There we go. That is marvelous. Now, as you noticed from the, the goals, the, the game is focused around the amount or the weight of things being shipped. Well, everything has different weights. Uh, though, realistically, you've got your, your high-tier items, your capacitors, gold, fuel, and steel plates, and you've got your kind of mid-range of coal, gold, and iron, and oil. Now, that is different from coal ore, iron ore, crude oil, and gold ore. As you can see, that's ten times the weight. So, uh, we do want to move on to the mid-range as quickly as we possibly can, because shipping this doesn't really help us. It brings in a little bit of cash, though, which is always nice. And you start off with a bit of a, a, bit, a bit of a boost. Any resource that you haven't previously shipped kind of starts with a 20% um, uh, improvement on, on its overall value. So that's actually quite nice. We can we can get a little bit of a boost, but eventually we're going to dry that up. And as you can see, it's already starting to go down for for uh, coal ore, and that's pulling down iron ore and gold ore. I think, again, they're kind of linked in tiers. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case if we're shipping oil, it'll pull down gold and iron and, and coal themselves, because they are, you know, quite distinct at that point, whereas honestly the ores are quite interchangeable. Right, let's go ahead and place down the third mining rig, and we should be going much better with that. There we are. Now, we may at this point be overproducing for one minecart. We'll see. But the problem that you may have already noticed is that when this minecart picks up two ore, it doesn't matter if the next place in the queue has two ore, and thus could top it up to four. If it's got anything in it, it won't accept anything else. So this one could happily top that up. Nope. Nor this one. So at this point, we do actually need another minecart. And it's as simple as just uh, clicking add. You can easily remove them as well. And you can also change the direction. Uh, and sometimes that will uh, will matter for you. But uh, right now, we're, we're basically shifting one full minecart load every now and then. So this is going to start uh, accruing. And that's all we really need for the initial bit of profit. But you really shouldn't rest on your laurels. This is a game, despite how comfortable it looks and feels, this game has a bit of a, a hidden time pressure, and I'll quickly describe that whilst it's paused, and it's paused for this reason. Now, if we have a look at uh, the, the costs, monthly power, that's fairly straightforward. It is literally what all of my machine's uh, pa stated power consumptions are when they're all summed together. There's no hidden things there. But the monthly tax, 3,357. Where's that tax coming from? Well, if you thought it was a sales tax, you'd be wrong. It is a tax on the total revenue. And the the important word there is total revenue. Lifetime revenue is another way you could put it. It isn't based on the monthly revenue. It's a, as far as I understand, a 2% tax on all the money you have ever earned every month. So as the game plays, that tax continues to increase. Every month, it'll be a little bit higher. If you made a profit that month, it'll get a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and it'll just keep going the whole way through the game. So you do really want to try and hit these goals without dragging your feet. It's not it's not a mad dash race, but uh, you certainly don't want to walk away for a night to let money accrue so that you can build something when you come back in the morning. If you do that, you're probably going to be bankrupt when you return, no matter how much money you were making at the time, because your taxes are going to be astronomical. And that, from what I understand, is the reason the developer implemented that system of tax. Um, there are lots of people who uh, question it, uh, to put it mildly, uh, but that is the way it is and is the reason for it. I am aware that the developers are looking to... Uh, to introduce a low tax mode, uh, whether that will constitute a no tax mode or just uh, maybe the tax will work differently. Maybe it'll be an income tax rather than a lifetime profit tax. I'm not sure, but uh, we can't actually afford to build any derricks yet. So we're going to have to wait on that one. But that is why you don't just want to sit idle if you don't want to. The, you, it, the game does put a, a, a gentle pressure for you to constantly be trying to upgrade and improve the efficiency of your factory. The fact that you'll get everything back when you delete a thing 
tells me that the, the game is intended for you to revisit old systems and improve them, get the most out of them that you can. And it doesn't penalize you for being indecisive, doesn't penalize you for learning things as you're playing, or for just unlocking new technologies that would make it better. Uh, and that is amazing, honestly. But uh, yes, you can't, you can't afford to just sit down and relax completely. Now, as you can see over here, we are actually starting to accrue more materials here than uh, we're shipping. So perhaps in these uh, long periods of dormancy, we could in fact afford to have another truck stop because that would be rather glorious, I must say. Uh, let's go ahead. Now this will probably push my uh, my drones to their limit, but let's pop down another truck stop right there. Didn't cost us too much, only 10K. Uh, there we go. We want this to, again, accept high priority uh, drones though. I'm gonna put this one on, on medium actually. If there is a truck here, I want the drones to load that one first because it's closer. If there is a truck here, then sure, load it. Uh, certainly, if there's a truck here and there's nothing here, then you should be loading it. But uh, don't don't waste time traveling to and fro uh, over there if there is a truck awaiting your attention over here. There we go. So we should now start seeing all of my drones rushing off. If I had six drones, then there would be enough of them to load a truck entirely from scratch and uh, that may be something that we want to look into another drone is going to grab a crate and at that point unfortunately these two drones have been given orders to go and bring crates over here so they may actually start making the journey already as we saw with that one but they do correct as soon as they realize oh wait now there's nothing there now when this truck pulls in they are not going to stop loading this one they are going to finish that one. Now, we didn't quite see them basically ignore this one half loaded in order to load this one, but that is effectively what they would do. But there we are. We are now uh, probably operating at more or less the maximum capacity for for this one, um, this one uh, crate maker for now. But we want to start looking into research. We've got a lot of different things, and each one of them really does change the way that you, you can progress. The, the big changes are the refiner, so you can turn coal ore into coal, the combiner, which allows you to make things like steel plates out of coal and iron, and the various, uh, the water, which leads to farming, which gives you a whole new resource that you can use, and the oil derrick, much the same. Outside of that, you have logistic, um, logistic researches, or technologies, I should say, and the key ones here, the step conveyor and the claw train. After the claw train, the next really big upgrade will be the claw train truck loader because that, at that point, you've more or less obsoleted drones. But then not long after that, you're probably going to get freight trains and that's going to obsolete trucks and then eventually rockets and that's going to obsolete trains. Um, more or less, you're probably still going to be letting them operate because uh, you're probably going to have things set up all over the place and uh, one train or one rocket or even 10 rockets won't be enough to ship everything you want. Right, so to get research on the go, uh, we are going to need a little bit of cash. We've got a little bit of cash. Now, the way that research works, uh, we're going to pay 200 um, energy, uh, $200 worth of energy, per month, but it will af uh, effectively accept uh, the materials and it will research it to the tune of its value. So um, you'll get X much research value out of using a material worth X much shipping value. If you used a more expensive material, you'd get more research out of it. If you used a cheaper material to ship, you'd get less research out of it. Now we could, considering that we are actually building up a bit of a stock over here, just tap into this if we really wanted to. Now it's in a bit of an awkward position though for us. We can't easily build it, but what we can do is demonstrate the way that uh, these containers operate. So I'm gonna place that there and I'm gonna place down another container. This is all, even though that is pointing in a direction, it is actually working in either direction. It is equalizing these containers. And if something delivered to this container, it would equalize backwards. Um, so the arrow there is a little bit misleading when it comes to containers. It does seem that they, they just move freely uh, either way. So now that we've got that there, we can go ahead and place down a research lab and hook it up. Again, we need to leave a gap so that uh, we can place down a, uh, a transport tube. There we go. Long, and then finally hook that up to power as well. There we are. You're going to end up with power line spaghetti. You can try really hard to sort that out, 
but there is no way to tell. You're not allowed to connect to that because it's a redundant connection. You're not allowed to connect to there to the redundant connection, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to end up with this spaghetti. Just embrace it. Embrace it. It'll hurt less. Don't struggle. Right, there we go. So this has loaded eight. Uh, it's got eight of eight. Uh, and we know that at this moment it's it's eight of eight uh, coal ore. And it has already processed one of them. That is worth 1,110 research points. And if we have a look over in the coal ore, uh, well, actually, that, that's going down probably since it processed it. But uh, as you can see, that actually just went down to uh, 1,106. So on and so forth is going to slowly build up over time. Right, at this point, I am thinking that maybe grabbing an extra drone bay and having enough drones that can grab an entire truck's worth of cargo in one go would actually be pretty cool. So let's pop down another drone bay, and we'll just uh, pop it there. And with that, I'm just going to buy two drones rather than, than uh, four, because I feel that might uh, actually be a bit of an excess and would cause me more trouble than it's worth, because the drones do collide. They are so dumb. So dumb. Don't trust the drones to do anything, even remotely resembling intelligent pathfinding. They will disappoint you. You you will just live a long life full of sorrow and misery if you put your faith in the drones. If you trust the drones to be dumb and build around it, you might have something resembling some sort of sense in your factory. Probably. It's possible they'll still mess it up, but seriously, don't trust the drones. Get off the drones as soon as you can. As soon as you can move to something a little bit more predictable, please do so. Uh, it will save you a lot of heartache. Right, now with that, I think it may in fact be time for us to look at hooking up, well, we've got a decent bit of cash. We could possibly look at setting up some iron mining. I think I think we will. We're going to just pop down the basics for an iron mining settlement. Much in the same way, I'm going to want to collect all of the ore and then deliver it uh, via another cart over here. Now, we can just deliver it over here. It won't get loaded into this uh, container because this container already has something else in it. But there are other ways that we can uh, get around that and allow this to just kind of you know load up whatever it particularly wants so that you don't have to worry. But honestly, we're already overproducing here. Uh, so odds are we'll have a second crate loader, and that will uh, allow us to ship even more materials. And again, that is the name of the game right now for us. Now, this is already looking like it's going to be a bit of a potch, and I will say I love the fact that you can just build whatever you want, wherever you want, and not have to worry about that causing you issues later on because the uh, the... Uh, trains, uh, you, you end up losing a little bit of money when you delete something. That makes it so much nicer. So much nicer. Uh, it does let you just, you know, lay things down just to see, oh, well, how much room am I going to need? And that is something I am totally on board with. Uh, right. Now, you're going to be a real potch, aren't you? Uh, there is no easy way around you in a way that is going to let me cook up. Now, there is the S-Bend. And I could place... Two of them. Three of them. It looks so janky, though. <laughs> We're just wiggling all over the place. I get flashbacks of playing uh, Snake Pass. Uh, so instead, we're going to go up and around. It is not even remotely approaching efficiency here, but it's fine. It should be okay. There we go. I'm not going to make this one into a loop. We really don't need to. And in this particular case, I don't think that's uh, particularly uh, useful for us. What I would like is to drop all of this off into a container. In fact, I could just hook the container up down here and allow this one to empty into the container automatically and uh, the rest of the uh, contents be just delivered to the other side of the container. I think that would actually be a little bit more efficient, honestly, given that how janky the space is. I like a nice clean loop uh, as much as the next person, but uh, in this case, this will be uh, the, the, the better better option for us. There we go. Right, so the minecart is only going to really be picking up from two, um, two uh, mining rigs, so we're not going to need extra room for it. So I'm just going to pop that minecart down right there. And I, in fact, I'm going to quickly pop a pause in as well. We're going to need to bring some power over from here. And again, power can relay through buildings that are already powered to some extent. Not all buildings allow for it. But there we are. We are now delivering iron ore. Now we need somewhere to deliver it to. Uh, I would like to uh, pick up the ore 
just over here. That should be fine. In fact, you know what? I'm going to let time pass for now. And we can just continue to build up a little bit of uh, money, but we're also building up a bit of tax as well. So, you know, it's uh, six of one and half a dozen of the other, really. Uh, we could perhaps have iron delivered over here. And since we know that we're, we're going to be producing more iron than, um, uh, than a, a single uh, collector will, will be able to use, we could even hook it up to the research bay as well. Now, research bays work in much the same way as the roads do, uh, or at least the road entrances, in that if the res uh, once you've placed the research bay, all future research bays need to be near it. Now, before you get, uh, get any clever ideas, thinking, aha, well, I can do this, and then I can delete the one in the middle. It's going to be fine. No. The moment you do that, this goes red. Because it's detected, there are shenanigans afoot. Ah, the game's too clever, unfortunately. It will uh, simply shut down all research until there is only one contiguous group of research uh, research places. Ah, the game's a little bit too clever. And uh, the first time I encountered that particular mechanic, ah, yes, that, that led to some interesting, uh, interesting shenanigans, I'm afraid. Uh, right, we want to bring this all the way up here and to offload. Now, the thing with this is I wouldn't mind having another uh, research bay, or maybe even two, set up to this. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit awkward to get that in there. Uh, oh, <laughs> dear me. That actually uh, immediately balanced the coal. It can balance it across multiple areas. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. So this is now load balancing the coal across these ah well we can we can fix that by saying no i want iron ore here actually so this one should shift that content hopefully it may not at this point so i'm just going to uh, isolate the research area and i'm going to let that coal move out now you'll notice that the uh, lights have turned green on the research building that is important for us uh, that means that we can collect the research up until now although it was accruing research credits we couldn't collect any of it uh, which was super, super sad. But uh, now that it's crested the this little point there, now that moves on the bar based on, on the value of it. I think it's basically you can only collect research once it's more valuable than 20,000. And so if you're uh, researching something that's much more valuable, then th this point on the bar is going to be a, a lot closer. And if it's something much less valuable, it's going to be a lot further along. All right, there we go. We actually want this one to be for iron ore. This one can be honestly uh, for anything it'll it'll eventually uh, all dribble out there we go and we will bring in well actually no i do do kind of want that to be for iron ore as well i've got to wait for it to finish emptying first though before i can set there we go perfect and now i can hook that back up there we are now that shouldn't be getting filled we want the wagon to be able to off uh offload right about here now we are definitely going to want a longer wagon than one at this point <laughs> this thing is hugely full uh, in fact we've probably got a wagon that can't really offload anymore so we're going to want two minecarts here and please change direction there we go we'll grab an entire four in both carts this is still full but uh, this is going to be emptying it a lot faster than we're delivering it. So eventually that will sort itself out. This will also pass in here. It doesn't really matter to the, the research lab what it's got. And I, I, it can happily mix things up. And in, in that case, it'll just list what its current research is made up of down there. But additionally, we do want to be shipping more things. We've always got to be expanding our business. So let's go ahead and place down the, uh, the next uh, building the next packer, and then we again want one, two, three, four, five, six. We can't quite afford that, so we'll go with uh, 750 there. And we'll pop that onto high. There we go. If you want to pick anything up, you're more than welcome to, and then you can load these two trucks a little bit faster. But as you can see, we're doing all right. We are actually shifting quite a lot of these materials, and the research here, having access to both iron and coal, will mean that uh, hopefully neither one gets completely uh, completely drained out because uh, the moment there's, there's room, it will pick from either or. I don't think the, the research bay, like the containers, can only contain one resource. 
Uh, that is, the it could have five units of coal stocked up, and then it would fill up with a three unit of iron if if iron was available for it to uh, to grab. Uh, though that uh, we may need to emphasize that one a little bit. But there we are. We've got a lot more materials now available for us to ship around. In fact, so much so that we could probably make do with another truck here as well. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. How are things going over here? Is this still way too full? It is still way too full. Okay, well, uh, that has exceeded my expectations. Let's add another cart. But that does mean, because this isn't a loop, I need to make room for the cart to offload. Uh, typically, I find two rail sections for a cart is a very good rule of thumb. It's probably more like um, one and a half per cart. Uh, that should be fine. So we should be uh, starting to empty this out pretty fast. At this point, each mining uh, rig can hold a decent... Uh, it can hold up to 10 units, which is why that never seemed to go below 40, even though we were uh, emptying it out. It's because this one had, had uh, kind of backstuffed, and so it was very quickly sharing with the container. But this should reduce the container's content a bit, and we'll start making progress in clearing up this uh, the, uh, the backlog of materials over there. Finally, it's below the 40. It won't be below 40 for very long, but uh, that's fine. We should be seeing a lot more moving out down here, so much so that we could, if we wanted to, build another depot over here. Now, that is not, in my opinion, the smartest move. Because at that point, my, my drones are going to have to be moving quite far. It might not be too bad if we moved everything over so that the drones were truly central over here. But there is another option, and that is we could build another road and have more trucks coming along. And that would probably uh, saturate what our drones can do right now. As you can see, they're kind of uh, mixing up the, uh, the loads on the trucks, but uh, I think that's going to be where we're going to leave the first episode. We've got a, a nice beginning over here. We've got uh, plenty of drones. We're loading two truck bays pretty much constantly. We have a surplus of materials starting to accrue, and we're even getting some research in as well. We are currently up to 36,000 worth of research. That is more than enough to unlock the refiner and the factory. Now, that is uh, going to be worth an entire episode all to itself, so I think we're going to lay down a cut here. I really hope you have enjoyed, though, and will be joining me for the next episode, but until then, and as always, do take care, everyone. <laughs>